Aloha, and welcome back to Live at the Legislature for our Hawaii State Senate segment. I'm Communications Director Jesse Bruder Van Dyke, and our guest this week is Senator Sharon Moriwaki, who represents Waikiki, Alamoana, Kaka'ako, Mokali, Mo'ili'ili, and parts of Makiki. And she's also a member of the Special Committee on COVID-19 that's been meeting throughout this pandemic to oversee the state's response uh, to this crisis. Uh, today is the first day that inner island travel is going to be allowed again for Hawaii residents. Senator Moriwaki, uh, how do you think this is being implemented so far? Uh, good morning, Jesse. Thank you. Uh, I think this is exciting that we're opening up. This is a soft opening for us. Uh, there, there is concern. We on the COVID committee uh, originally closed down all our harbors and our airports through the 14-day quarantine. So this opening up is that there is no quarantine for anyone traveling between the islands. We want to open up our businesses, our hotels. So it's a good thing. Um, we're still concerned that public health be our number one um, uh, objective be, as we open. So in the inter-island travel, I know we've heard about people being concerned. There, there will be required of everyone traveling inter-island that they get the thermal screen, that they fill out a health form. And on that health form, it asks you, do you, you, know, you have a fever? Or do you have any, any signs of, of any kind of um, symptoms? Uh, and I believe if you do have a fever of 100.4 degrees or over, you won't be allowed to travel. So there is- And this, the some, special committee has been working on this form, right, with the department? Yeah, we have in, in terms of the um, Trans-Pacific people coming in from outside the island, now it's testing it and making sure that, that this travel form um, also is used inter-island. And this probably, as it, we test in the, the months to come or the, the weeks to come, how we do that uh, in trans-Pacific travel. So um, the information that was there originally um, on the ag forms now is very specific in terms of where are you staying so that if we find anything, there's contact tracing that that Department of Health can follow up so that we can isolate anybody who's infected. And, and, and everybody is also supposed to mask up on the planes, but I'm hearing mm -hmm. that it's not always the case. But mm -hmm. the idea that we should be healthy, we should stay healthy, that is going to be the mantra uh, in terms of travel. So I, I hope that this uh, piloting and expanding will work, that we don't see the kind of spikes that, that everybody is, is, is afraid will happen. Mm -hmm. And there are also other businesses that are reopening, such as restaurants and coming up soon, bars and things like that. Um, how is that going to affect our flattening the curve? Again, um, all of all of this is is new, unprecedented. So uh, we are seeing that the uh, the um, hotels, the restaurants are all looking at how do they disinfect, sanitize, how do they physically distance. So whether it's it's plastic barriers, keeping uh, the six foot distances between tables. The restaurants have already opened up. In fact, last weekend, I went out to patronize our Waikiki restaurants. Um, it's it's um, all the ones that are open are distance. They are all everybody's masked up. They ask you to mask up until you eat. <laughs> and uh, and so it's a it's a real pilot test of how can we do this so that we can stay safe, but also enjoy what we, we like to do, go out with friends mm -hmm. and family. Um, so, so that uh, I think in the, in the weeks to come, we will find ways in which we can do this better. Uh, I know that we met uh, with some of the hoteliers and uh, the unions. The concern is, of course, with their workers and how they disinfect, how they have the protective gear. Uh, what kinds of things can we do so that we can make sure our employees, our visitors are safe uh, and, and what that might look like as we start looking at what, what we need to have in place. A lot of people want to know what if there's any timeline for ending the mainland quarantine. We, we are as well in the special committee. We've been working with uh, the departments, 
urging the governor to um, to come up with uh, some date specific. The hotels are looking at the the difficulty, the uh, the amount of planning that has to go in, the retrofitting in some cases, um, and the bringing back of workers. So the time specific, a date specific, is important to ramp up to that date. Uh, the governor has said he will make some kind of announcement this Wednesday. I know he's been working with uh, some of these groups. The, the travel bubble is a soft opening. Uh, the uh, group, Paul Yonamini and his uh, HEC, uh, put together the, the, the airlines, the businesses in Japan that are, are mm -hmm. willing and able to work together with Hawaii. And there's some discussion with the attorney general, with the governor, uh, to see how might that happen. Uh, and hopefully that could be an experiment, again, another pilot of how you work together uh, in a travel corridor between two destinations that have low incidence and can work through what the protocols will be instead of the 14-day quarantine that nobody will come to Hawaii with a 14-day quarantine. How might we send that with, say, pre-testing, testing when they arrive, contact tracing mechanism um, and, and screenings. And all of that needs to be in place before that happens. So in terms of answering, along with answering your question, we don't know, but we're hoping that, mm -hmm. that it could be in time July, August, so that hotels can get back in business again. Well, if we, we could do a bubble with Japan, I'm sure that would help the travel industry a lot, uh, bridge the gap for this time. And I know there's discussions about other possible Asian countries being included in that travel bubble. So we'll see how that goes. While yeah. Waikiki has been relatively empty, uh, the mayor did an experiment this weekend with the open street Sundays. And I know a lot of your constituents in the Waikiki area had some concerns about the number of people in Waikiki during that event. Can you tell us a little bit about what happened? Yeah, I, I don't know if you saw the newspaper um, yesterday with, with the the total <laughs> uh, total excitement and energy in Waikiki because of Open Sunday. The problem with that, as you can see in that um, that photo and, and videos that were taken, is that, that it was like bikes all over. Uh, the cyclists were moving in and out of people walking. There were people with their um, their carriages and and um, boogie boards or whatever the the and and they were the segways. They were all over the place and they were closely interlacing like the Black um, Matters movement. Many with no masks on. So the fear is that. Uh, we will have spikes when we have these kinds of congregate um, events. When we're saying, you know, restaurants, everybody has been so good in these past months, and I want to mahalo, mahalo everybody for that, that we have kept the 10-person limit. We have masked up. We have physically distanced ourselves. And now in one event, you can have many people close together, no masks, and one person can infect everyone. So that, that is a real fear. Uh, if we can look at ways in which, if these kinds of events happens, there's three more Sundays in Waikiki, I would hope the mayor would look at this, put up signs, remind people of masking up if they're close together, physically distancing themselves, being a lot more mindful and aware of people around them. Uh, I know many of my residents were were concerned that that they had no input in how this would happen. I hope after this this first one that while it's nice to have people together, that they be mindful of other people. The whole idea of this is getting together, but also being sure that that we are safe, that we keep ourselves healthy, and we consider other people around us. Um, and, and so that is my concern about these kinds of events, that they totally uh, go against what we've been doing for, for many months. And it would be a shame to have a spike uh, because of these openings. Um, I, I would like to say that, that uh, in, in our district, the mostly hit because of 
having restaurants, bars, hotels, that we have a number of unemployed. And I've been working with all of them who, who call in or email me because each person is, has, has their trauma in terms of not having work. I've been also looking at the budget and how we might address those who are still unemployed and and who are disqualified and don't get unemployment benefits, that we, we help them find employment as well as um, retraining. So, so as we come together the next week uh, uh, with the legislature coming back, looking at that budget that we set aside for just these purposes, seeing what has happened in the weeks since we last met, how we can better use those funds to help those really in need, whether it be the unemployed, the businesses that need help opening, um, and our kupuna who may not get the services that they had uh, originally pre-COVID. So I'm hoping that everybody um, takes care of each other, lets us know what their needs are as we go back into session. We will be looking very closely at how we use our very minimal funds because our budget uh, is is really like two billion dollars, you know, in the red. How do we mm -hmm. use the funds the best way mm -hmm. we can to help our residents? Well, so we just have a couple minutes left. As you mentioned, the legislature is coming back into session on Monday, and you're a member of the Ways and Means Committee in addition to the Housing and Technology Committees. And there is some federal funds, which I know you're, you and your colleagues on the Ways and Means Committee have been uh, considering what to do, uh, what can help the most number of people. We just have about a minute left, but uh, can you give us a little preview of what's coming up this week? Yes, we are grappling with the budget. That is really important, that federal relief funds that we set aside the $635 million. We are looking, as I said earlier, how can we best put those funds to help our people in the next six months and, and be able to help those, especially those unemployed and needing help, uh, and, and for the small businesses that need help as well. We're hoping that we can and we can push those funds into into areas where they're needed immediately. So I hope Thank that, you. And that everybody really does care for each other in this this time of very difficult time for all of us. But thank you so Absolutely. much. Thank you so much, Senator Morawaki, and we appreciate that. And thank you all for tuning in. Thanks so much to the crew at Olelo for keeping us on the air during this pandemic with this new technology. And thank you all. We'll see you next week. Aloha. Aloha. What are you doing? We have to go. I'm gonna be late for work. It's Tuesday morning. I gotta record live at the legislature on Alelo. Senate and House leadership discussing what's happening at the state capitol? So just watch it on the news tonight. Come on, let's go. Hey, this is like getting the news before it's news. If only I could get this remote to work. There. Can we go now? No DVR? No problem. Watch Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. on Channel 49.